Two men are walking from Larange, northern Saskatchewan, to Regina's legislature, some 630 kilometers, to raise awareness about suicide in Saskatchewan. NBC sat down with Walking With Our Angels founder Tristan DeRocher to discuss why they feel this walk is necessary and what they hope will come from it. Just for the record, can you introduce yourself? Where are you from? Um, my name is Tristan DeRocher and I'm from Buffalo Narrows, Saskatchewan. And what led you to the decision to walk? My walk began on July 2nd. Our objective was to raise awareness for suicide, the crisis across the north, and also the lack of services across the north and across the province and the lack of care and empathy from the part of the sitting government, the Saskatchewan party. My plan was to walk from LaRange to Regina and start a hunger strike on the Regina legislative lawn until the government was willing to legislate something meaningful that I'm convinced will save lives. And so that's what we're doing. A, uh, a warrior song for the, for the guys that are gonna walk to give them strength after. began it was a unanimous vote against a piece of suicide legislation proposed by Doyle Vermette, who is a member of the Legislative Assembly for the Cumberland constituency. He lives in the ranch and um, he's my baby brother's godfather. Um, so it was hard to see him broken and hurting and so upset on the CBC after that piece of legislation that he brought forth, which he was convinced would be able to be a good start and would start saving lives and contributing to us burying less children and youth across the province. And um, it was unanimously voted down. I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for those families who have lost loved ones, who have come to this assembly, and I thank them for that, who have signed the petition, who have reached out to the minister, leaders who have said, please, we have a crisis, FSIN, PAGC. Everybody trying to do what they can. What we asked for, you know, and the, there's comments about maybe if the legislation or the, the bill would have said this and that. I have reached out in letters. I've reached out to the ministers, both of them. We'll work with you. We'll, we'll amend it. We'll do whatever we need to make this work so that the government could say, we'll work with you. We've given that up. I met with the ministers. We've offered that to them. Obviously, that didn't happen for whatever reason. Mr. Speaker, the government has an opportunity today to those families that have lost loved ones. And I think about our indigenous community, and I think about our leader, he talked about, and I, 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 I listened to what he said. And the leader of the opposition said this. If this happened in a community of 40,000, northern Saskatchewan, we have 40,000 residents, roughly. If you had a community like his hometown of Moose Jaw, if you had youth with the rates of suicide in that community of 40,000 in Moose Jaw, you would see action. You would see, you would see your supports and resources like you've never seen before. I believe you would. We talk about dealing with it once and for all, about showing respect and dignity. There's an opportunity for the government to reach out and say, enough's enough. Our indigenous communities have been impacted, our youth, and it's time. A number of members in favour of the motion are 13. That the following members are opposed to the motion. Mo, Beaudry Miller, Bonk, Bradshaw, Burkich, Buckingham, Mitchelson, Morgan, Nerline, Olawson, 
Ottenbright, Weeks, Wilson, Wyant, and Young. The number of members opposed to the motion are 44. Uh, I declare the motion lost. That enraged me. I was just as disgusted as when I had read the Gerald Stanley verdict on the night that the Bushi trial was over. That uh, this shouldn't have happened, this situation shouldn't have happened, and Colton should still be here. And these acts of injustice that continue to happen, you know, it's, it's unfortunate um, that we're at this time and at this place. I thought that it had the same level of kind of horrific indifference on the part of the Canadian state and our institutions. Their complete disregard for the lives of Indigenous people horrified me because they're not statistics to me. They have faces, they have names, and they have voices. And I know them. And I've played fiddle at numerous funerals across northern Saskatchewan, beginning when I was 10 years old. So for 14 years, I've been trying to console grieving mothers with my music, and I'm sick of it. They shouldn't be burying their children. They should be waiting for their children to bury them when they're old and they've lived a beautiful, long, happy life. No mother should deal with the heartbreak of saying goodbye to their child. And yet it happens again and again and again. Suicide is the leading cause of death for the demographics ages 10 to 46 in the northern part of our province. Saskatchewan has the highest suicide rates in Canada. For every 30 girls that commits suicide in the province, only one is not Indigenous. And yet you have a man like Warren Keating, the northern and rural remote health minister, saying openly on the legislative floor, Mr. Speaker, Suicide is not a geographical, territorial, or race issue, while the facts, which are public, say otherwise. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to uh, thank the, the member from Cumberland for his advocacy in this, in this very important issue. I believe uh, he, like so many others in this province, has been uh, affected by suicide uh, directly uh, through the community and, and as well throughout the province, Mr. Speaker. It, suicide is a very serious issue. Legislation, however, is not necessary to, uh, to establish or implement a plan. Mr. Speaker, I, I do appreciate, we appreciate the advocacy of the member from, from Cumberland, uh, but I think we can all agree that, that there's more work that needs to be done on this very important issue. We need to reduce the rate of suicide in this province. This private member's bill calls on the SHA to undertake work that, uh, related to jurisdictional scans that the Ministry of Health has already undertaken, Mr. Speaker. What is important is that we need to take actions. We need to take actions to reduce the rate of suicide in this province, and we need to do that now. The Pillars for Life, Saskatchewan's uh, suicide prevention plan is gonna guide those actions, Mr. Speaker. They paint a different picture, a horrific picture, one that our government and their elected officials and their appointed officials responsible for Northern and Remote Health will not accept they present to the public alternate gaslighting realities of everything's fine, everything's fine. Everything is not fine. We're bearing too many in a country this rich, in a, in a Canadian state where they have an international reputation as being so free, so rich, so liberating to people who come from all over the world. They treat a large demographic of their population as second-class citizens. We live in third world conditions. There are children who grow up in living rooms where the curtains sparkle from the crystal meth. There are children who grow up in neighborhoods where gangs leave the bodies of young mothers because they couldn't pay them the drug money. There are children growing up with sores on their skin caused by crystal meth smoke exposure we're in a crisis. We're in a hopeless state. I know people who work for the crisis response teams on reserves, which is essentially a suicide hotline. They respond to calls when people are ready to kill themselves. They play that game of a tug of war 
with a rope and a child on the other side, trying to pull it from their hands. And nobody should have to work that job Monday to Friday and go home and receive no support or even no acknowledgement from people like the so-called honorable Warren Keating, who completely deny that the problem exists. To me, that is covert genocide. To me, that unanimous vote and that unanimous display of indifference on the part of our elected officials who had the power, the capacity, the means to do something but didn't is not only indifferent, it's criminally negligent. It's a violation of their fiduciary legal responsibility to provide mental health services to the residents of Saskatchewan and it's sickening. So I'm walking down to Regina with a rage of a blaze in my heart. And I'm ready to show this country and this province that we are not statistics. We are people and we matter. Moreover, we're not going anywhere. We may be inconvenient, but this is our home. We have children buried in this land. We have elders buried in this land. We have the bones of countless generations of ancestors buried in this land. We ourselves will not leave because we will be here until the end so that we can rest in this land. And our transplanted imperialists with no regard for our lives are the value of the beautiful spirits that are our children need to know that we're not going anywhere. And they need to know that we're not alone anymore. There are people in this province from all over the world. We are a diaspora, a mass displacement of people from around the globe. Children of all ethnicities, all religions, all races call this province home. And yet we still have people in the halls of power who say, we're gonna fight for our children, for our schools, for our communities. Fight for the children because they're here and they need you and if you can't do it don't call yourself a christian don't say you're pro-life don't say i love thy neighbor because you're letting us die don't say thou shall not kill because your criminal negligence and lethal indifference kills we've had enough so, Emily from Cumberland area, Mr. Doyle from it's so nice to see you again and talk to you. Um, can you speak about a little bit about what this walk means for you as a, as a person in your position, a legislator, and, and what was your response when Tristan told you? Very powerful. It was like uh, emotional. We had a good talk on the Saturday when he called and said he was going to do this for, you know, those families that lost loved ones and for those young people struggling and, and with losing hope. And that's what he wants to do it. And he just, it was powerful. We had a nice talk and uh, like I said, it was an uh, emotional talk. And he just said what he wanted to do. And I was like, man, that's a long way to walk. Uh, you know, what you're trying to do. And I, I guess for me, I, it was emotional and uh, at the time that he said it, but here we are and he's doing it and his commitment is, and that, that's what amazed me. It's this young man who's doing this just to show the injustice and, and how he feels that how, Somebody couldn't support a bill to bring us all together. And it's not just about Northern Indigenous, it's throughout the province and he wants to do this for everyone. And he wants to make, uh, making his voice known that he thinks the government needs to do the right thing and support us in a crisis. So to me, uh, I said, I was very emotional when I came home Friday and to get the call Saturday evening from him, just uh, give me a little bit of hope again. Even I sometimes struggle with the hope in your thing. You can't understand why anyone would oppose a, a suicide uh, strategy bill 618 what he did and the government to not to support it so when he he just lifted up my spirits a bit too and he knew i was down he said i know you're down he said i could tell he said you're down but he said we won't we're not going to give up hope and that's kind of why i'm here supporting when they invited me to support him as they make their journey i just thought okay i'll be here to support you i'll head back to regina right away to be ready and when he's going along the way i'll support him i'll do what i can i know my colleagues will be supporting him uh, the, as opposition we're going to support him as best we can and i hope he brings awareness to everyone as we make along why he's doing this and the importance of suicide throughout the province it's not just about the north it's not just indigenous communities we see suicide hitting everyone it impacts so many people and i think it's time that we come up with and I've said this, actions speak louder than words, and Tristan is making some action to say to government, now 
you get to actually do something. And that's what he's looking for. And that's why he's doing what he's doing. So I just wish him well. I just ask that he has a safe journey. And those people along the way, please support him. Honk, do whatever you can to let them know. Reach out to your, your MLAs in your area and tell them, look, you need to support this young man. He wants action. He wants commitment from the government to have a suicide uh, strategy uh, legislation, a bill. So I'm just going to say to everyone, reach out to your MLAs, reach out to anyone you can and say, hey, you guys need to look at this again and we need to do the right thing here. Also, when we talked and I was asking you about sources of inspiration, um, historical walks as a, as a point of advocacy, as a non-violent way to advocate, especially in COVID times, uh, are very uh, effective and, and powerful. And, but, and I asked you if you were inspired by uh, a man named Gary Tinker, which we both know walked, did this walk from the Rancho Regina to raise advocacy 20 years ago. But you said, oh, I'm aware of the walk, but I'm not, I'm not so inspired by it. But you did say you were inspired by the Nishiu walkers who walked in 2013 uh, throughout snow and ice and crazy things like you have with thunder and hail. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder how it feels for you to be a part of this walking legacy and it seems like more people are walking now. Um, mm -hmm. How does it feel to, to know that possibly you're an inspiration? I have a, a dear friend of mine and she had a beautiful, beautiful marriage and a beautiful relationship. They were literally soulmates and her husband had passed. And she said, do you want to know what helped me, Tristan? Walking. I would just find a place, a road, and I'd just walk until I couldn't really go any further, and I'd turn around and I'd walk home. And she told me it helped her heal her grief. And so during this COVID epidemic and consecutive lockdown, how I've dealt with the stress, with the uncertainty, with my psyche and the public psyche and the global psyche being centered on death was walking. I walked 12 kilometers a day when the lockdown began. And when George Floyd was killed and I saw the video, I walked even further each day. So without knowing it, all summer long, I had been preparing for this walk from Laurent to Regina. I had a man who worked as an emergency response team member. He said 17 calls he had responded to where he was there to find a corpse and the grieving parents. He said those faces will never leave his memory. Finding that will never leave his memory. Those broken families will never leave his memory. And he said he struggled with the vicarious trauma of that job and finding that. And so just think, that's one man and 17 deaths. Since 2005 alone, this province has had over 2,000. You're very prescient in saying that I think things will change in Saskatchewan. We are the hope. This is a walk for youth by youth, contrary to one recent publication. But and I hope I'm not being crass here, is a hunger strike suicide in slow motion. Why is it necessary to break hearts? It's necessary for it to be a hunger strike because there have been other Indigenous people camping out on the lawn of the Legislative Assembly, and they didn't even receive a token consultation from the government. The sitting government didn't even really come out to see them and ask them, hey, why are you here? They just treated them like this inconvenient group that needed to get off their lawn as soon as possible. This can't happen again. And so the hunger strike is to rush them, is to make them feel the sense of urgency we do. Every day counts and matters. Residents of Saskatchewan and indeed Canada will be paying attention to this walk as each day does matter and does bring them closer to their goal of change in Regina. If you'd like to join Walking with Our Angels, you're more than welcome to as they move through cities and municipalities on their way to Pile of Bones. If you'd like to donate to the cause, there's also that option through a link that will be provided in the description.